The secondary reinforcers are very important because these are paired with the primary reinforcers. One, two, three. And don't you stop the music and do it, won't you dance with me? Find a place and lose it, you can do it, won't you dance with me? And welcome back to our ZM2J's channel. This is Jocelyn P. Mangibin, a board-certified behavior analyst and an international behavior analyst. Well, I'm very excited to share with you what's the ideas for today and what are the concepts and principles of ABA that I want to share with you today. Just fasten your seatbelt because this is a little bit technical, but I believe this is very important to understand before we jump off into the verbal operands or any other teaching styles or teaching techniques of ABA. Now, before we proceed, I would like to share with you why I love ABA. I love ABA mainly because of its seven dimensions. And it's like a package of everything. It's very practical and it's very useful for daily lives. What are the seven dimensions? Let's talk about it quickly. Number one is behavioral. Behavioral because we focus on the observable behavior. Those behavior that we can measure, we can see, we can count. We don't speculate on which behavior we need to increase or we decrease because it's very obvious that we observe the behavior that we want to increase or decrease. The next one is applied. It's applied because our focus is to increase the social significant behavior that is useful in the person's daily life. Isn't it amazing that there is a science that can increase your social behavior, social significant behaviors, and with that, we can really improve our social life and we can improve our social positive social behavior. The next one is technological. Technological is mainly our instructions, our plans are written properly, accordingly, and individualized so you can replicate it and it's easy to understand. It's like a recipe. The next one is conceptually systematic, which means all of those um, instructions and all of those um, techniques that we're saying are derived from the ABA principles and concepts. So what I'm sharing with you now are all derived from the concepts of ABA principles. The next one is analytic. That means we derive all our decision makings, all our interventions from the data, the functional relations of the environment from the behavior that is happening. So we base everything in data. Generality is the next. Generalization. And it's very important because the behavior that you have trained should be generalized in all times, in all settings, in every different people. Just like, for example, the child is responding to other person but not in the other therapist. It's very important. Or the child is doing these skills at home but not at school. So generality is one of the dimensions. And the last but not the least, effective. ABA is effective. Whenever the interventions that we did are not applicable or not working for one child, we need to change it. We need to change it in a way it is effective. But the moment we change it, make sure it should be connected to the concepts of the ABA principles. So those are the seven dimensions of ABA. And that's why I'm really in love with this field because it covers everything that, um, that connects with teachings, the skills, um, even with the different behaviors, you want to um, build a new behavior or you want to decrease a behavior, those are all covered. But that's not our topic for today. I just gave you like a, a segue of why I love this ABA so much. So let's jump to our topic for today. I'm suggesting to use reinforcement rather than punishment. Actually, it's not just I, it's the ABA field itself you have to focus on the reinforcement rather than punishment. And why is that? If you would observe our world, when you work, when you go outside, when you walk, we are living in the concepts of ABA actually. 
Why are you working? You're working to get the salary. Why are you going to the toilet? So that you can feel better and you can release whatever you want to release. Why are you going to the fridge to find food? Those are all basically concepts of behavior. And what, what kind of concept is that? That's what I want to share with you this afternoon. The contingencies of behavior. So basically, our behaviors are just turning into these four contingencies. Okay? So what are those four contingencies? Let's just focus on this first. This is reinforcement, it says. And then this is a punishment, okay? Under the reinforcement, we have the positive reinforcement and the negative reinforcement. And under the punishment, we have positive punishment and negative punishment. These are all consequences, okay? Now, when do you say that the stimulus is a reinforcer? Or when do you say that a stimulus is positive reinforcement? So here is it. You are adding something to the, to the environment and the result in the future, okay? The behavior or the frequency of the behavior, not just the frequency, even the magnitude, it will go up or will increase. So when you say reinforcement, always, always behavior increase. Now, what are the examples of positive reinforcement? So we have actually two kinds of reinforcers. We have the unlearned or what we call primary reinforcers and we have the learned ones, the secondary reinforcers. The samples of the primary reinforcers are water, food, oxygen, that we don't need the history. We just need to be deprived. For example, we, we are deprived of food. Of course, you will get food from the fridge. So those are the primary reinforcers. Now, the secondary reinforcers are very important because these are paired with the primary reinforcers. For example, we are using chocolate to reinforce the child. Chocolate is a primary reinforcer and the reinforcer is very important to increase the behavior. Okay, when you're training the child, you have to use reinforcer. So when you are pairing the M&M with your praise, with the secondary, so you are conditioning. Okay, it's very important to condition the secondary to the primary. That is why sometimes I have heard lots of parents saying, I'm saying, yeah, good job. I'm saying, uh, you did a good job. That's nice. But he's still not listening. Because your good job is a secondary reinforcer. The primary reinforcers are food, water, oxygen, and warmth. So we focus actually on the primary reinforcers before we go to the secondary reinforcer, which is more on social. Here are some other examples of the positive reinforcers. Edibles. Activities. Like for example, um, playing. Playing in the playground. So that is an activity. Actually, there are some kids that fixing a puzzle is really a reinforcer for them. So might as well, you have to observe your child properly. What are the reinforcers of your child? So number one, edibles activity and then tangibles tangibles like ipad toys and other um you can see other um toys that you can see most of the time is related to toys and of course the social and the sensory sensory is the automatic the one that we talked about before by themselves they can produce it so those are the kinds of reinforcers the positive reinforcers you are adding it to the environment for example he finished his activity and then you give what is the favorite item or the reinforcer so in general our positive reinforcers are edibles activities tangibles social through attention or praise and sensory that is the automatic now let's go to negative reinforcement which is in this quadrant when you say negative you are taking off 
But when you say reinforcement, the behavior is, again, it's increasing. Let me write it for you. So it's here. So when you're taking off something and the future frequency or future magnitude of the behavior is increasing, then that is a negative reinforcement. So what are the two kinds of negative reinforcement? Number one is the escape. That is very well known, SK. And number two is avoidance. Okay, escape is escaping from any undesirable situation. And avoidance is, of course, you are avoiding that situation to happen. What are the examples when uh, you're having negative reinforcement? For example, you have a headache. What will you do? You will take medicine. Why? Because the taking off of the headache is your reinforcement. You're taking off something and you feel better. So the headache is gone. So you're taking off something that is negative reinforcement. And the example of avoidance is like, you're, um, you're taking a, an umbrella with you so that you will not get wet when you, get, when you go out. So that is one kind of avoidance. So the avoidance is simply you are avoiding something. Something undesirable thing happened. But you have the history. So remember, the reinforcement and the punishment, you have the history of the, already of the consequence. That's why you're, in the reinforcement, your behavior is increasing. I hope it's clear with you what is a positive reinforcement. You're adding something to the environment that increases the future frequency or magnitude of the behavior. And the negative reinforcement is you're taking off something in the environment that increases the future frequency of the behavior. Now, it's time for us to go to positive punishment, okay? The third contingency, positive punishment. When you say positive punishment, you are adding something to the environment. However, the future frequency or magnitude is decreasing, will decrease. Same as true with the negative punishment. You are taking off something and the behavior or the future frequency will also decrease. What are the examples of positive punishment? Reprimand. When you say no, or when you shout at your kids. And um, when you say that that is a punisher, the shout or the saying no, when in the future, that behavior will decrease. Okay? But if that behavior is increasing, so it's not a punishment, that means it's not effective. That's why most of our no to our kids or reprimands to our kids are not effective. Another kind of positive punishment is when you hit your child or you do the spanky to your child, which in the ABA, we are not doing it, okay? So when your child child's behavior in the future will decrease, then that means the spanky is a positive punishment. So positive because you added something. It's not the other positive that uh, the normal world are talking about. So when you said positive, that is you added, but the punishment, the, 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 the behavior is decreasing. Okay, so let's go to negative punishment. Negative punishment example is like taking off an iPad from your child who had a behavior, like who had a negative behavior while using the iPad. So when you take it off, and then in the future, he will not do the behavior, so it will decrease. So that means you're taking off something and it is a punisher for him. So that is negative punishment. So basically, guys, our lives, our daily lives are roaming around these four contingencies. Let's have a quick review. Positive reinforcer are stimulus or stimuli that you added to the environment and the future frequency is going up and the negative reinforcement or negative reinforcer you take off some
Now, why did I say that it's better to use reinforcement and not the punishment? It is because reinforcement is easier to provide. Food is easier to provide. Praise is easier to provide. However, the punishment, we cannot spank all the time. We cannot shout all the time. And even there's what we call recovery from punishment. That sometimes we cannot provide the punishment right away. So it's not consistent. That the effectivity of that stimulus to be a punisher is nothing. And as well as I want to go back to the negative reinforcement, which is the escape. So time out is not a good solution for escape. So if you are a teacher and you are watching this video, please take note that time out is not all the time effective. Why uh, have you wondered why your, your student um, is still not doing his work and you put in time out and again, he will not do his work. It's because putting him on time out is actually a negative reinforcement for him and it's escape and he will be happy when you put him on time out so again just to review the reinforcer those are really good for improving positive behaviors or new behavior and the punisher I will not suggest that because in ABA we really focus on reinforcement first however if you did all the, the interventions using all the reinforcements and Mm, still it's not working sometimes there are some punishment but it needs to be done by the behavior analyst and the behavior analyst know the ethical impact of all the punishment so that it will be not just a pure punishment but it will be a package of interventions that is the technical part of the four contingencies of the behaviors and it's very useful because on the next videos we're gonna start with our trainings of the verbal operands and it's very important another information or another additional information that a behavior is a set of responses okay that share a physical dimension or function and why i'm saying this to you because in the future we need to talk about the responses the target response that you expect from your child what are the target behaviors or the target response that you expect from the child so that we can train the child properly so i hope it's clear with you guys the four contingencies of the behavior and of course the seven dimensions of aba if you want to review it you can go to journal of applied behavior analysis and it was published in 1968. our topic for this afternoon what we talked about the four contingencies of the behavior, what are the effects of that for the behavior in the future, and also what are the primary reinforcers, what are the secondary reinforcers, and how we pair them so that it's easy for you to fade it out. And we also spoke about the samples of those contingencies, which are very important. If you have some ideas of some examples that you can share, please do comment below. Also had a discussion about the timeout which are not effective when the function of the behavior is escape. And also the threats are not effective if you're using it as a punishment because threats are not punishment. Thank you, thank you so much for staying with us and uh, I hope you share this video, you like this video and I hope you learned a lot about the ABA principles and fasten your seat belts again because in the next video we're gonna start our verbal operands on how to Train your child to speak, to request, and so on and so forth. That's all guys. God bless you all.